San Calixto, I will always remember you with joy and love in my heart. This place has become a second home for me, and after 12 years here, I can't believe that I finally have to move on. Thank you for all the experiences I've made and the friends I've created. You will always have a place in my heart. These 12 years that we spent in our school helped me to mature and improve as a person. I'm really grateful to those people who were part of my life, like teachers, classmates, and friends. I always remember with affection all this experience. We will leave the school, but we will never forget all the lessons that our San Calixto school gave us. San Calixto show us more than a simple curriculum, and we will be forever grateful. As they taught us to be people who always seek excellence, thank you for teaching us for 12 years of our lives and showing us the correct way to follow in the future. San Calixto has a special place in my heart. Our teachers have always encouraged us to be better, and as the school preset says, to help and love others. And that's exactly what we have learned through all these years. I will never forget San Calixto. I'm living with a smile on my face. I love you, San Calixto. Hi, my name is Camila Moya Tescobar and today I'm going to talk about the typical food of La Paz. The gastronomy of La Paz represents an important touristic potential but it also represents the culture of La Paz. It tells a story behind its people, its festival, its sorrows and its joys that translate it through various traditional dishes. Among the most typical and traditional dishes are Chairo Paseño. The chairo is a dish from the Bolivian highlands. It's a soup prepared with chuño, lamb meat, soak, chalona, potatoes, carrots, onions, red beans, corn, good herb, cacataya, oregano, and salt to taste. Plato paseño. It is the dish that is normally eaten in the commemorative dates of La Paz. It's a dish that combines corn, potatoes, beans, and cheese, and is served with a spicy sauce called the jagua. La Paz, wonderful city. La Paz is a city in Bolivia, which has lots of touristic places. One of them is the famous Moon Valley, Valle de la Luna, located in Mallaza, 40 minutes from the city center. This magic place is known because of its peculiar topography, which can be compared to the moon. Its ground, full of spikes, is described by Neil Armstrong himself as a piece of the moon on Earth. The Moon Valley has such a peculiar view, caused by er erosion over hundreds of years that has consumed much of what the mountain used to be, leaving only a stalagmite desert. This, added with the endearistic characteristics that the mountain of La Paz are made of clay that contains different minerals, generates a great variety of colors in these areas, leaving as a result a landscape that will take your breath away. This is a perfect place to go and take a walk. The photos here are, are also amazing. Definitely, El Valle de la Luna is a must see if you ever come to visit us here in La Paz, a wonderful city. Good afternoon, teacher Delis Jambi and classmates. I'm Valeria Escalante. I'm a student of Summit 22, and today I'm going to talk about our beautiful city, La Paz. La Paz Wonder City. First, I will tell you about some touristic places that I visit and I love. The first place is Copacabana. Copacabana located three hours from the city of La Paz and on the shores of Lake Titicaca. It's an important touristic and pilgrimage center of Bolivia. An amazing place to learn about the culture and tradition of the people of Titicaca. It's a base for exploring the Isle of Moon and the Isle of Sun, which have sacred Inca archaeological sites. Near the main square of Copacabana, the square 2 de Febrero is the Cathedral of the Virgin of Candelaria, where everyone goes to be blessed. Hi, 
I'm Mariana Yanagoya Chavarria, and today I'm going to talk about La Paz and the wonderful places that this city has. La Paz is a chaotic, high-altitude city and a hotbed of fascinating new touristic activities, all of which reflect the face of modern Bolivia. The uniqueness, beauty and energy of La Paz is evident from the first second. That's why today we will talk about what to do in this wonderful city. Fancy a bit of adventure right in the heart of downtown La Paz? Then check out Urban Rush, a crazy experience that proves how brave you are, as you have to leap down from the top of a 17th floor building right to the central Plaza San Francisco. Just outside the city limits lies the spectacular natural attraction known as Valley of the Moon, with a lengthy labyrinth of bizarre eroded rock formations. It's not hard to unveil how the site got its name. Hi, my name is Alejandra Borgoa and today I want to tell you the story of the Valley of the Moon. Its name was given by Neil Armstrong, the first man to set foot uh, on the moon, who was visiting the Bolivian seat of government in 1969. Neil Armstrong was the one who baptized this place as Valley of the Moon on a visit to the city of La Paz. In 1969, after witnessing a match between the strongest and Bolivar was preparing to play a game of golf and giving the proximity from this place to the golf course. Armstrong saw the similarity that existed with the landscapes of the moon and decided to name it that way. Uh, well, good night everyone. Today I'm going to speak about this history of La Paz. Uh, it's one of the seven wonderful cities of the world, with La Habana, Doha, uh, Beirut, Durban, Kuala Lumpur and Bigan. Um, well, La Paz is the cap uh, political capital uh, from Bolivia. I'm going to speak about the three most important events that are the foundation, the revolution and the federal war. Uh, in the beginning, the, on October 20th of 1548, 16 years then of the conquest of, of uh, America, uh, Alonso de Mendoza uh, founded this city in the highlands of, the, of Audencia de Charcas. Uh, this city, the purpose of this city, was to be a bridge between Potosí and Lima. Why? Because from Potosí were extracted the silver, the gold, and it had to went to had to go to Lima, so it can be carried to Spain. The tradition of worshiping the Keko idol is Illa dates back to the pre-Hispanic times of the Pucará and Tiahuanaco cultures in Bolivian and Peruvian altiplano. A tradition finally narrated by the Aymar. However, the formal organization began in colonial times with the arrival of Spaniards in 1781, when the mayor govern, governor of La Paz, Audiencia de Charcas, José Sebastián de Segurola, ordered an annual party to be held in honor of the day, deity of the Keko. In gratitude, because the city was saved from the indigenous environment of Tupac Katari. Hello everyone, my name is Laura and today I want to show you one of the most amazing things that I like about La Paz City. The seat of government, as we know it, is located in western Bolivia. It was founded on October 20 in 1548. It currently has more than a million inhabitants. In 2014, the organization New Seven Wonders Foundation recognized our city as one of the seven wonder cities 
of the world. This has been a great achievement, not only as a city, but as a country too. This city is wonderful at all, yeah, but the most wonderful thing that it has is the weather. Hi teacher, my name is Alejandro Peredo Bernal and today I'm going to talk about uh, La Paz city. Uh, first, uh, the city of La Paz was founded on October 20, um, 1548 by Captain Alonso de Mendoza under the name of Our Lady of La Paz. His libertarian deed took place on July uh, 16 of 189, being the first free government in Latin America. La Paz is the seat of the government of the plurinational state of Bolivia and the capital of the department of the same name. It is located in the northwest of country, limiting to the north with the department of Pando, to the south with the department of Oruro, to the white, to the east with the departments of Beni and Cochabamba and to the west with Peru and Chile. Good morning to everyone present. Today, my partner Sergio Pacheco and myself, Leonel Londoño, we will talk to you about one of the most important festivities in Bolivia, the Alacitas. Okay, the Alacitas is an ancient Bolivian custom. The, it's a festival, it's a tradition of the city of La Paz. It goes back to a Nancy Daimara tradition that after the colony, became a religious practice, responding to the usual syncretism that characterized the rates and custom of Latin America. In reality, initially the pre-Columbian god Ekeko of the party was naked, but the Spanish dressed him in clothes of the mestizos. Alacitas, which in Aymara means boy me or by me, is a fair in which origi originally the native people exchange miniatures, agricultural products, colored circular stones or with some particular. The exchange was practiced with joy and with the hope of having during the year. Hello everybody, it's Jose and I'm going to tell you about fricasse as a typical food in La Paz, Bolivia. Origin. The dish is believed that was a local creation inspired or derived from the traditional French fricasse. Adapting the preparation and ingredients to the availability of local foods and use and custom from the colonial and republican times. Description. Fricasse is a spicy broth that includes chunks of pork, chuño, and corn. In the preparation, onion and panca pepper are added which give it a reddish color. Traditions It is a typical dish in La Paz City and is marked as a restaurative dish again hangovers. After a night of being dragged, it's typical to go for a fricasse the next morning. Bolivian Heritage In 2014, Fricasse was declared by Municipal Law Cultural Heritage of La Paz City, along with other typical dishes such as api, gyro, chicha morada, cinnamon ice cream, and lajo. Hello everyone, I'm Gabo and I will talk about the country that I love very much with all my heart. Bolivia is a country with a big culture with a lot of important uh, things because it has a lot of typical dances, typical dishes and more. Today we will concentrate in a specific place called La Paz where I live. In recent years uh, La Paz has been considered a wonderful city. That is totally the truth because La Paz has beautiful streets and a great history. Uh, let me show you one of the iconic uh, squares of the place. Now we're going to Murillo's Square. It is a place uh, with a great history where iconic and unforgettable moments of La Paz happened. In my opinion, there's no a place in the world where the history of the place is so beautiful. No matter what other people think of my country, I love the histories of the yesteryears. The government house of La Paz, later known as the Government Palace, and today known as Palacio Quemado or Burnet Palace, 
was built between 1845 and 1852. For its construction, President Jose Banguian had the old Cabildo building demolished. This work was instructed to the Bolivian architect Jose Núñez del Prado, who designed it in neoclassical style with three big bodies and a large courtyard. During the government of Belsu, 1848-1855, the arrangement and the interior decoration were completed. It's curious that precisely Belsu died on the stairs of the palace, murdered by a man of Melgarejo. Melgarejo. For his part, never ruled from there because he was afraid of Belsu's spirit. This wouldn't let the suffer as the consequences of several revolutions of the history. This happened in 1875, when it was the set of the fire in the fire revolution that began on the March 12th. Hi, my name is Ivan Poman. Today we're going to talk about Alacitas and the Keko and their origins. The Alacitas Fair is an annual month-long cultural event starting on 24 January in La Paz, Bolivia. It honors Ekeko, the Mara god of abundance, and it's known for the giving of miniature items. Other fiestas and ferries throughout Bolivia incorporate Alacitas into religious observances. Origins the sociologist and cultural heritage David Mendoza shows that the celebration of the Alacita and its relationship with the Keko have left no written evidence about its origin. His best known antecedents are supported by myths and legends. One of the reasons why there would be no documentation, according to the investigator, would have, would have been the Spanish colonization that didn't allow the development of certain belief systems. Hi, I am Camila Camacho, I am in San Calixto School in 6th grade, and I am in Summit 22. Today I will talk about some places in La Paz that you should visit. First we have the Valley of the Moon. It is a municipal protected area and geological formation of the city of La Paz. It is located about 10 kilometers from the urban center of the city. If you like these kind of places, you can visit the Valley of the Souls. It has an area of 2,538 hectares. This rock formation is the product of the melting of a glacier millions of years ago. This place is a little bit farther than the previous one, but it is bigger and you can take fantastic photos with these particular rocks. Valdez Vega. I am a student at San Calixto School and I am also a student at the CBA and today I'm going to take you through a very beautiful public space in La Paz City. So come with me through this special tour and I hope you have a great visit. Without a doubt, the Park Laguna de Cotacota is one of the most important and meaningful places in La Paz City. Not only for being an important cultural attraction inside our beautiful city, but also because it is one of the few public spaces that comes with both an artificial waterfall and a lagoon. So let's take a ride through this park. Besides being a cultural attraction and also a urban park in La Paz City, there are several activities that visitors have access to when they enter into this special park. Hi, I'm Dyer. Today we are going to talk about something interesting and magical. Nowadays it's difficult to celebrate special dates because of the pandemic, so I'm going to show you a little bit of what's all saints in La Paz, Bolivia. Let's get into it. During this festivity, the memory of the dead is cultivated. Blooming to your graves, the cemetery is filled all day long and families come to play homage to their ancestors. The Feast of All Saints takes place on November 2, however, this festivity begins a day earlier at noon when the souls of the dead arrive at the houses who share with their loved ones who are still on earth. 
Hi teacher, today Mariana Rivera and I are going to present the legends of the past. Today we're going to talk about Hyena Street, formerly known as Cabra Cancha Alley. It's one of the most famous streets in La Paz, especially for Calixtinos who for years fearlessly have walked through that sector telling the stories that were passed up from class to class. And there is no student of San Calixto who doesn't know the street and their crazy stories. It originated in colonial times in the 16th century, where it was known for being only a market for buying and selling camels. And it's called that because Apollinar Hain lived there, one of the many heroes that on July 16, 1809, they yelled about the revolution and proclaimed freedom. In 1810, all the leaders, including Murillo and Hain, were hunged or beheaded and their heads separated from their bodies. Hello to everyone, my name is Angela Flores and I'm going to tell you about music in La Paz. Tarka is an instrument from Bolivian Altiplano. They are one piece wooden flutes with six holes. Its name means horse voice. Usually is an instrument for groups musicals and have different sizes. Another well-known instrument in La Paz is Zampoña. It is an air instrument that is made of hollow reeds, usually having 12 of these. A type of Zampoña is the Sicura, which has a double row of reeds. But music in La Paz is not only to be enjoyed, it also has a lot of stories, and a way to represent these stories is in dance. Hello everyone, my name is Luis Gary Maquera Ticona and today I'm going to introduce you one of the most touristic places in La Paz and personally I find it credible. I like this place. The General Cemetery of La Paz is a cemetery that has 92,000 square meters and is located in the campaign neighborhood on the avenue between Entre Rios and Baptista and the street monasterios and picadas. A street monasterios and picadas signs the general interim makes a character, Latin character of Burian in barracks that are very common features, features run from a Latin culture and not so of the Anglo-Saxon cultures, which are more simple and buried underground. Hello, my name is Antonio, and now I am going to tell you about a traditional food that comes from, from my country, that is Bolivia. This food is called chairo. Chairo is a soup that comes from the south of my country also known as the city of Oruro. This is a soup that comes from Oruro and is very salty. It usually comes with cereals, meat, potato, vegetables and more and more species. It's a delicious soup that was catalogued by the Spain people like the soap of the old world. Hi. I'm Valentina Villarreal and I believe La Paz is a beautiful apartment and has so many places that can leave you open mouth. But there is a place that came to my mind when I think of the most beautiful place in La Paz, Senda Verde. Located 8 kilometers away from the city, you can find the wildlife sanctuary La Senda Verde. It might look like a zoo, but it's quite the opposite. It's a sanctuary where you are the one who is in a cage. and visited by the ones who live there. There are more than 800 rescued animals from 65 different species of mammals, felines, birds, amphibians and more. All the refu refugees are either victims of illegal captivity, indiscriminate hunting and illegal trafficking of species, specifically from the Bolivian Amazon. My name is Cesar Pasa, and this is my course project called Wonderful City and Wonderful Stories. Today I'm going to talk about All Saints Day. To talk about this, we have to know about the history that comes with this celebration. 
In the tradition, the dead doesn't exist. It's just your soul leaving your body. And that's why the people celebrate this day, to be with the souls of their family. Here in Bolivia, it's celebrated in a specific and special way. The family reunites and they prepare a table. On this table is put some of the favorite food of the person who died and also some of his clothes. In addition of these things, some breads with different shapes are on the table. There are a lot of them, but the most common are the stairs. This one represents that person is going to use it to go up to the heaven. The street of the witches is a street market located in La Paz, Bolivia. It's on Linares Street in the center of the city near the Church of San Francisco. In this street lives the myth and the legend, where you will find all kinds of amulets, traditional objects and medicinal plants. As you can see from the street... Hello, my name is Natalia and today I'm going to talk about one of the most recommended tourist places in the city of La Paz, the famous Valle de la Luna. This place is located in the southern part of the city, 10 kilometers from the center of La Paz. It's a natural attraction of great beauty, thanks to the water and air that through their erosive effects created those formation of cones and craters that resemble a lunar landscape. He said that the person who put the name was none other than Neil Armstrong, the first man to set foot on the surface of the moon. The entrance to the valley of the moon has a price of 15 Bolivianos for foreigners, which is about $2. There are several trails that lead to the center of the valley, from which you can appreciate beautiful views of the site and the surroundings. The visitor can also observe cacti and biscachas, typical species of Andean fauna and flora. Without a doubt, this place is worth visiting. Good afternoon, good evening and good night. Today we would like to present a country with a lot of places with culture and history and either presentation. Makes it a country with a beautiful and unique things that appears in Bolivia. Today we present you La Paz Maravillosa. A must-see place to get to know part of the La Paz culture and its traditions is Copacabana, an important tourist and pilgrimage center in Bolivia. Copacabana is a town in the Maco Capac province located 150 kilometers from the city of La Paz, where several bus companies have daily frequencies from the La Paz General Cemetery. The trip lasts three and a half hours. But what are the most traditional places to visit in Copacabana? Let's see. Thousands of pilgrims come to the Basilica of Copacabana to venerate a virgin. Hi everyone, my name is Santiago and I am on one of the most historical places in the city of La Paz. I'm on the Murillo Square. Located in this urban center, this place houses many, many historical milestones of the past, as well as buildings where people make important decisions for the cause of Bolivia. They are the Plurin Palace and the old legislative assembly that are right behind me. Likewise, this historical center is characterized by museums that allow us to understand the history of our country a little bit more. As is the Chakwar Museum. Thanks to all of these historical places that house the Murillo Square, we have decided to make a report on the most important marathons archive in the place. As the state shocked, dictatorships and the path of elected presidents. We really hope you like it. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening. I am Eric Cardenas 
and together with my friends, Adrian, Henry and Naim, we are going to talk to you about a very beautiful place. A place that for us represents friendship, camaraderie and above all, being more for the others. I'm talking about the San Calisto School. This school is an educational, heritage and traditional institution in La Paz, Bolivia. A few meters from Square Murillo, the central place of this city. It was founded by the Society of Jesus on July 15, 1882, at the initiative of Monsignor Calixto Clavijo. It offers primary and secondary education. That is why today we come tell you about this school, showing the most important and emblematic places that can be found in these schools. Good morning and welcome to our five viewers. Well, two viewers. Don't get upset in the chat. Today we are going to take a look of an abandoned structure. We are talking about the Libertador Simon Bolivar Stadium. Let's see the place fifth. This place is located in Landaeta, and although it seems like it, this place has a sport file with moments and glory and a great history. It was inaugurated on a wonderful February 19, 1968. It was here where the leaders of the Bolivar Club decided to unite with the strongest, in order to create a monumental stadium, but due to various mishaps the construction was delayed and less was invested. Bolivian gastronomy has deep Spanish and indigenous roots. In reality, it is mestizo because the different historical moments that the country experienced influenced the cuisine of different regions. Therefore, there is a wide range of dishes and recipes. The cuisine is varied, rich and differentiated. To show you some dishes that are served in Bolivia, I went to popular Cocina Boliviana at Murillo 826. As you can see, the place contained some more restaurants and it was a cozy place. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, where you are listening to me. Well, my name is Sofia Juliana Flores Calderón from the San Calisto School. And today I'm going to tell you about the history of the Center Polyclinic that is located on Ingabi Street, steps from Plaza Murillo. And I will tell you about an important event that reminds market on the wall of this center. The Central Polyclinic of the National Health Fund is a space that was created in compliance with the Social Security of 1956 when it was implemented as a social patrimony of the workers and giving rise to the creation of polyclinics and hospitals nationwide. One of the events that will remain indelible on the retina of the Bolivian people and fixed in the infrastructure of this polyclinic are the events of February and Black October of 2003. Historical incidents where dozens of deaths and injuries were registered. The same ones that are seen in the ballot that the police and military exchanged, which are now a seal on the facade of this health center. Signs, although they wanted to restore the damage caused, the repair was stopped in order to remind the evidence of what happened. Well, that is a bit about the Central Polyclinic and I hope you like it and thank you for watching this video. It is Sofia and goodbye. Hi everyone. 
My group is made up of Pablo Álvarez, Luciana Chávez, and myself, Camila Sordo. Today, we will talk about the Park of Las Cholas. The Park of Las Cholas, or all snow and the Park of La Florida, is one of the most emblematic places in the city of La Paz. This is located on Arequipa, La Florida Street, in the southern zone. Among its main attractions within the park, we have a recreational area with four beach playable courts, a skirting rink with ramps, a mini theater with stage and blenchers, a covered corridor with hanging planters, children's play areas different by age, a nursery school with decorative elements. For, three, for children and with covered water fountain, ticket, office and bathrooms. In general, a uh, great vegetation to be able to go and have a good time with family. But what is most tricky is the beautiful place are its well-known chola sandwiches, which are located next to the park gateway for many years. The landlords have been in charge to sell in the best chola sandwiches in La Paz. Hello everybody, I'm Amilcar and today I will present one of the most wonderful places in Bolivia and the world, Lake Titicaca. Lake Titicaca, considered the highest navigable lake in the world, located in South America in the Andean Highlands area within the Department of La Paz in Bolivia and shared with the Puno region in Peru, Lake Titicaca is a scenic place wherever you look at it. The origin of Lake Titicaca is due to the formation of the Andes Mountains range that thanks to the movement of the tectonic plates in the territory under the sea that rose to 3000 meters and that formed the Andes Mountains range also gave rise to the plateau of Collao that trapped a large portion of the sea and kept the waters frozen in its interior. Hello today, I will talk to you about the road of the dead. First, it is called that way. Since after the prisoners of war of the Chaco, they built this road they were thrown off the precipice. Some say this is the revenge of the prisoners of war of the Chaco. Second, curiosity of the road of dead. It is estimated that on this road, which has a slope of 3000 from its height point to the lowest part of the route, more than 100 people die every day. Hello everyone, my name is Adriana Botello and today we are going to talk to you about the Sorsano Rofton Square and all the history behind it. With my help, Dad, I'm Carolina, we will help you to know more about one of the most important squares in our city La Paz. Finding the Bennett was discovered in the Acapana Pyramid at the Yawanaku Archaeological Complex in 1932 by American research Wendell Bennett. A year late, the archaeologist Arturo Posnachi obtained authorization from the government of Daniel Salamanca to transfer him to La Paz. The Bennett monolith, built by the members of the Wanaku culture in the imperial period of the ancient pre-Hispanic civilization, its capital and main religious center was the city of the Wanaku. Well, well, well. Uh, this project is not as good as other projects, but I will do my best. My name is Joaquin, I am 17 years old, I study English in San Calixto School, and this is my project about the course Summit 2.2. Uh, 
and I hope you enjoy my project and let's start. Uh, as you see, my project is about the witch's market. Uh, it's in the street Melchor Jimenez. In this market, we can find a lot of things made by hand about toys, t shirts, some sculptures by rocks, and other things. Years ago, the indigenous people called the Plaza Rosinia Cusipata. Kirkincha was one of the caciques who dominated the Chukego village, and there he had one of his circles. In 1555, seven years after the Spanish founded Nuestra Señora de la Paz, in 1548, Juan de Rivas, one of the founders, concerned about supplying water to the Spanish inhabitants who were supplied with water from streams and wells, they tried decided to install the first pool in the city, in Cusipata. With the support of the Spanish authorities and Aymara labor, he installed lime and stone gutters to collect water from the stream that ran down from the hill of the hill at the foot of Cusipata. Today, that hill is known as Calvary. The chain of pipes reached the Cusipata Plain, where a water box was boiled at the Spanish stallions, the first stick. It is located in the northwest area of the city of La Paz, Maxpalidus Macro District of the municipality of La Paz. The cemetery has a main entrance to the entrance of the funeral processions. This entrance presents an arch that marks the access from Baptista Avenue. The entrance leads directly to the main chapel. The configuration and structure of the cemetery correspond to different stages of construction and include different styles. The layout presents pedestrian paths of different materials that connect group pavilions called barracks, as well as family and personal mausoleums tributes to prominent figures. The pedestrian pathways and the different sectors have their own names and squares. Now let's talk about the history of this place. La Paz is a beautiful city that has a variety of urban parks such as the Villa Harmony Park, Mayasa Park, Central Urban Park, Valle de la Luna, but today we are going to talk about Cotacota Lagoon Park. Cotacota Lagoon Park is located on 30th Street in Cotacota. It is one of the largest in the city of La Paz, according to Emma date. It has an area of 12,300 square meters. One way to get to this point from the city center is using the route to Chasquipampa of the Pumacatari buses. Now, we will talk about our experience in this wonderful park. The groups of my park, Valdir Flores, Gabriel Flores, Andre Perez, Javier Santibáñez, uh, Mauricio Yupanqui. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. These are our ingredients. For a start, we have to smash the peanuts. Then, cut green onions. To continue, cut the meat in a small cube. Still with the knife, cut the carrot more small than the meat.
Very good morning to everyone. On this day, our group made up of um, Rodrigo Gutierrez, Cesar Ceballos, and Sebastián Pérez. We have the pleasure of talking to you about one of our tourist places, La Muela del Diablo, which is made up of myths, legends, and a story behind that. Uh, what is what is La Muela del Diablo? La Muela del Diablo is a hill located near the city of La Paz, Bolivia. Uh, 300 meters high is located between the Serranías de la Sur, near the neighborhoods of Calascoto, Aquisibana, the, the Pines, Mayasa, and Maj Mayas. It is one of the tourist places of the city visited from the city and the high. This is one of the erudite formation of Southern Paris, an immense rock with a human will. <music> Hi, hello, my name is Diego Rejas and I want to do one question. Did you know that this year La Paz, our wonderful city, celebrates 212 years of the revolution that happened on July 16? Well, in honor of this, I invite you to enjoy this video about one of the best schools in our department. The FEPA San Calixto School, which recently celebrated his 139th anniversary, making it one of the oldest educational institutions in La Paz. It was founded by the Company of Jesus by an initiative of Monsignor Calixto Clavijo. The old construction that is now the primary school playground is located on Genaro San Ginés and Conide Streets, while the construction is completed in 2012 for secondary level students in which a very particular teaching system known as the modular system was used. It all started more than a decade ago in El Alto, a suburb of La Paz. It was a poor sector of the Bolivian seat of government which received peasants from different sectors of the country who came to try their luck. But today, it is a busy site in Bolivia with a growing Aymara burgeoning and a strong indigenous identity. After the arrival to the presidency of Evo Morales, this indigenous burgeoning demanded points of distinction. This is how Freddy Mamani, a former bricklayer, decided to create an architectural identity for his own, the Aymaras. In 2005, Freddy Mamani obtained his first commission proposing to a merchant an elegant building with Andean and colorful shapes. La Paz, one of the CV wonder cities of the world. City of hate, city of working people, city of mystical flavors and more and more wonderful things. This is my city. This is our city, home of Chicutas and Tigre and Bolivar, the city of heaven, the city that has modernized it without losing its costumes and culture. And now we present seven night places that you can visit in La Paz, the wonder city. Historical street, not only for La Paz, but also for Bolivia. This street has a lot of museums about Bolivian history, including the Pedro Domingos Murillo's house, the hero of revolution of July 16, 1809. Hi everyone, we are Valentina, Alejandra and Brianna. Today we are going to introduce you to our beautiful city of La Paz through a tour of the three most iconic places of this wonderful city. Puentes Trivisos is the name of a set of three Bolivian bridges located in the city of La Paz. These bridges are Libertad, Union and Independencia. The three bridges have a total length of 2,000 meters and were inaugurated on November 28, 2010. These three bridges, known as Puente de los Trivisos, 
are located in the center of the city of La Paz, Bolivia, linking the east and west side of the Bolivian capital, allowing the flow of vehicular traffic. The three bridges have very similar characteristics. The Nevado Illimani, the most famous and important mountain in the city of La Paz. The origin of this mountain is 65 million years ago, and now this mountain has a sacred image as a symbol and guardian of the city of heaven, La Paz. There is a lot of curiosity about the Illimani mountain, so much so that there is a great delay. Legend has it that the son of Wairacocha Iji one day meet man. The doctor, excited by his son father, the fearsome Furia Kestua. The young girl very much enjoyed seeing it what made Iji fall in love as well as her beauty. However, there was a rivalry between the two families so Mana warned her lover that her relationship wouldn't be possible. Even so, Iji confessed to her father her love for man, but Waira Koch, who knew Kestua, warned her son that her love would only bring misfortune. Despite her disappointment, Iji, inspired by the song of her beloved, decided to marry her against everyone. Purapura Forest is a public space and protected area located west of the city of La Paz, in the Purapura neighborhood. Part of the Max Paredes Macro District, it is one of the 27 municipal protected areas and one of the two largest forests built in the city. It's a forest area that was established by the National State Railways Company, previously known as Bolivian Railway, with the aim to stabilize the sector and preventing the generation of landslides and the creation of gullies as the railway line passed through the area. Currently, these excuse tracks of the old train still run through the park. 368,200 eucalyptus trees and 15,500 um, cypress trees were planted in the field in 1948. This business initiative was joined by private initiative, that of the um, anthropologist Alberto Laguna Mie, who planted 1,000 eucalyptus trees in the Vino Tinto area. Too worried, tell me something. Um, I tell you a story that I'll tell you about the Hong Kong. Uh, what happened was here in the past. Oh my god, tell me yours. I have another story, but tell me yours. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the first revenue in here there, there is a house owned by spirit who wrote it. Uh, it was to try to deal uh, that case. Ago, they live a family made up of a couple and they live in daughter of just a one year old as well as a woman who carries for him with her parents working. I love you a lot, I love you sweet. Were the words of confession that the mother say to her little daughter. Those words would have been taken in account by the employee uh, who apparently had mental problems. Uh -huh. uh, yes, uh, one day the couple went over a party, they were too very late and were perhaps with other things, you know. Blue, blue, blue. The guy out <laughs> and be there the next day, Doña Nora. We can hear you. Ah, we can hear you. Oh, sorry. I say, welcome to Bolivia. We are in the stadium. As I mentioned, we are in the coldest department in Bolivia, La Paz. Latin music was little loud to speak wasn't it? So we have to edit our voice. At first, the Hernando Siles Stadium was supposed to be an open museum. However, it became a famous tourist spot. To my right, I have the famous Pollos Copacabana restaurant, where people say that it's a delicious to eat their chicken. This is the Okisamaya mirror or the point. 
in this place we can find captures or views like sounds of Zepinos, Kota Kota, Lava Kisamaña, and Achomani. This is a great place for uh, family time or a funny time with the kids because it's a very beautiful place, um, basically. The viewpoint of Aukisamania is located in the city of La Paz. In the southern areas of this in Aukisamania, together you have to go along Avenida Costanera until 21 of Calacoto. This grandiose viewpoint can you give you a view of more than 270 grades of the entire southern area of La Paz. As you can see at night, you can see all the lights that it has throughout the post and throughout the houses, as well as a beautiful park that is right in front. Murillo Square is located in the center of the city of La Paz. It became the center of political power in Bolivia after the transfer of the executive power to La Paz as a result of the federal war of 1899. This space was conceived 10 years after the founding of city of Your Lady of La Paz on October 20, 1548, that is in 1558, commissioned by the magistrate Ignacio de Aranda. At the beginning of the 19th century, the Plaza Mayor of La Paz was the epicenter of the power of the city and the main stage of public life. Around it were located the buildings of the main institutions. The Cabildo de La Paz was located in the southeast corner. It was currently the government palace. They were also in these plazas such as the imposing palace located on the corner of the Comercio and Sucaballo streets, built in 1775 as the home of the San Francisco Tadeo Díaz de Medina. Hello, today we are going to talk about my teleférico, the orange cable car. We are Adriana Martinez and my partner Maria de Los Angeles Torres. Uh, my teleférico, official the state cable transport company, my teleférico, is the public company in charge of the administration of the urban cable transport system, teleférico. La Paz, El Alto, which lines the city of La Paz and El Alto, the first of its lines began operation on May 30, 2014. When the first three lines were complete, it became the longest urban transport cable, cable car network in the world. There are currently 10 cable car lines, red, yellow, green, blue, orange, white, light blue, purple, brown, and silver. Para mi linda La Paz, se va la primera! La Paz is a city that has hidden wonders and today we will show you three of them. A magical place full of snow, typical food and transportation that makes the city of La Paz unique. Hello there, today I'm in La Cumbre, a very cold place but the weather is dry. We are at the highest of 4,670 meters above sea level and the surface is about 40,000 hectares. We are also about 71 kilometers to the Richard Road. Right now there is a fog and some places are frosty but even the people of the place can be seen making their tables for the month of August. Hi guys, I'm in La Paz City. As you know, I'm from Santa Cruz and I came to visit to La Paz. Today I'm heading to one of the most tourist locations in the city of La Paz, Jaén Street. There we will meet two little people who will explain more about the history of this icon street. Let's go! Okay. 
She is my friend Teresa and she explained about the historic street. Hi, well, in the city of La Paz, the heirs of Bolivia, there is a street full of dangers and mysteries behind the street. A very small street in the center of the city, which is still one more artery within this chaos of the city La Paz. Hi! Today we are in La Paz, Bolivia. We all know that Bolivia has a lot of culture and gastronomy. And today we are going to try this. We are going to go to many restaurants here. Stay, Stay with, with us! us. Our first place is the Mercado Camacho. Here we will taste the famous fruit salad. This has many fruits like apple, banana, paya, kiwi, and others with yogurt. The reasons why these fruit salads are very famous and traditional is because here in La Paz, the people prefer these salads over breakfast and lunch for the colorful texture and flavor. After we tried this salad, we knew why people love this place. The tension was so good. The casaritas are very talkative and friendly, but if we talk about the flavor, it is so delicious. So we want to invite you to come here and eat this dish. Now we came to Los Castores Salteñas. Come on. Here we are going to taste the famous traditional dish, the salteña. This dish is like an empanada that has potato, ahogado and meat. The history is Illimani is the mountain that gives a unique image to the city of La Paz. It's the highest mountain in the Cordillera and one of the most popular in Bolivia. What makes it incredible and famous are its three characteristic peaks that are covered with a white mantle of snow. Also, you can observe it from any part of the city. Especially, one of the best places to see it is the Illimani Avenue, in the urban center of the city, where you can appreciate the beautiful sunset with the Yimani in the background. You can also have a beautiful view from the General Cemetery, with a complete and extraordinary view of this mountain. As some interesting facts, the Andina legend considers the Yimani as the guardian mountain, and in fact, it provides us with water. Good morning teacher, I'm going to talk about Cororico. It's a place with a, with a weather very very warm and it's a, a funny place that you can go with your family or your friends and it's a, it's a place with, with very delicious food and it has um, a, a lot of of places that you can go with your friends or your family because and it's a good place because the weather is very very warm and it's so enjoyable that you can stay a lot of days and you can go to eat to eat traditional food like desayuno yungueño or a type of liauchas. Hi, Hi everybody. I'm Nadia Aguilar. I'm Tania Laredo. I'm Moyo Mente. I'm Lucia Rodriguez. And I'm Gustavo Miranda. And we are from the sixth level of San Calixto School. Today we are going to visit this place. We can find the Hada Sorzano Square in several ways. For example, Hugo Estrada Street is located to the south of the square, just like Boyos Copacabana is located in the south of this place. The Hada Sorzano Square is located in the Miraflores area, exactly in front of Fernando Siles Olympic Stadium. To the northwest limits with Claudio Pinilla Street and with Ijimani Avenue. Also, we can see that there are many routes that led us to the square. Hello, my friends. I am very excited about the adventure that we are going to have. We will visit La Paz. And in this video, we will know about five places of La Paz. Mystery, history, romance, modernity are some words that define La Paz, a city of hate and stunning views. 
This architectural beauty is the fountain of Neptune. It was made in 1928, and its original location was the El Prado. This fountain symbolizes Neptune navigating the waters, flanked by two nukes. The fountain has been carved in Carrara marble. <music> Welcome to Semper Margin News, with the most important news of our day today. I'm Emmanuel Castro and my partner Andrea Yucra is here with me in the studio. Hello Emmanuel, today we have our reporters deployed in various parts of the city of La Paz. We go with Romina Solis to the Triangular Square. Thank you Andrea. The monument of General Jose Francisco de San Martin returns to the square of the same name also known as Triangular, in the Miraflores area. The act of restitution was carried out only after almost two years to make way for the construction of one of the stations of mi teleferico white line. Both the clothing of San Martin and his mold are representation of the real ones, since their relatives had preserved them after his death. His image reflects a serene but confident attitude in his leadership, with his right arm showing the way to his troops under his command. And also from Mia Flores, we go to with our college, Eddie Castro. 